I, I think that uh, we should be honing in on NATO. Yeah. He, you know, he, he, if, if NATO didn't exist, you, we would have never heard of Zelensky. Yeah, Let me yeah. tell you. Well, let's put up that first clip because this is an article that we noticed in Unheard. <clears throat> and it kind of trails with some other things that we've been looking at this morning. Well, America and Zelensky's dream. This is Thomas Fazzi wrote this. The pro-war consensus seems to be weakening. It's a very good article that we recommend reading. What he talks about in the article is how much the establishment figures, and he cites, um, he cites David Ignatius, he cites the Washington Post, uh, he cites Josh Hammer with a piece in Newsweek, uh, he cites David Sanger, very pro-war uh, traditionally, um, Elon Musk, who's not necessarily uh, pro-war, but essentially these are all the figures of the establishment who are now changing their tune out, and they're not going, turning anti-war. Uh, and a lot of them, I think, are disingenuous. They see that the ship is sinking, I think, and they're ready to abandon ship. Uh, and I think that's also being reflected in the Republican leadership. And this is something else I think that ties into the same thing. GOP will likely oppose more aid if Republicans win House back McCarthy. And with Kevin McCarthy, that's about as anti-war as he could possibly get. <laughs> right. We might oppose the aid. But yeah. a shift is happening, I think. Yeah. When you run an empire, the end of an empire comes when people who run the empire forget about the people who are paying for it, and there's finally a rebellion against it. And it, it doesn't have to be a violent rebellion. And I think people are, are starting uh, to, to oppose the war. And when Washington Post allows some of this stuff, you know, a year ago, he probably wouldn't even say that in yeah. the Washington Post, saying that uh, there's a, a, a bit of a problem and maybe we've overdone it in Ukraine.